So that's a thing. Hey guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Welcome to my first day of COVID. Yeah, I had it before twice. Uh, back in March 2020 and back in, I want to say June, July-ish, somewhere around there. When we got sent home from the office because the air conditioner was broken. And yeah, it looks like I'm going to be working from home for the next couple days. Problem is, is because I opted to always work from the office... My computer, my phone, all my good stuff that I need to work is at the office, not in my house. So my manager is actually going to drop it off at my house later on tonight. And then uh, I'll be able to set up a docking station, which I have now um, on my desk. I actually went to uh, Best Try and bought one. I use it with my Dell laptop. I'm going to be using it with the IBM. It's got a 100 watt uh, power adapter with USB pass through. Uh, HDMI, DVI, or HDMI, VGA, and DisplayPort. Can handle up to three monitors. Has uh, a bunch of other crap on it, too. It's by some company called JCreate, and so far, it's pretty ballin'. So, it does what I need it to do. It connects the computer up, gives it three monitors, and it charges the laptop through USB-C pass-through. If your laptop supports USB-C pass-through, so... Uh, I'll be working from home for the next couple days. I had to burn a sick credit for today because, like I said, I had no computer. And I didn't want to risk going into the office to infect anybody, so it is what it is. So in case you haven't seen that thing I showed in the beginning of the video, that there is a COVID test that you can take at home. It's a rapid antigen test. Basically, you fire this Q-tip thing down your nose into your nose way and then pull it out and mix it in with this special solution. And then you pour the solution onto this little tablet thing. That runs it up the line and one stripe is fine. Two stripes means you're infected. I'm infected. The only reason why I have been testing is because... I just, I felt kind of off today. And usually when I feel kind of off, when I wake up and I'm feeling really lethargic, and it's different than when you wake up and you're just low on energy. I woke up, had a coffee, and didn't feel right. I was like, oh boy, here we go. So I decided, you know what? I got like three boxes of these tests. Each box has five tests. Let's just give her a go. I tested, came back positive, and went balls. So I can't go into the office like that because I don't want to risk infecting anybody, especially because I work in the tech lounge, which means people come in to see me to fix their problems and that means that I am in direct exposure to them. So I decided yeah I'm just gonna take a sick credit for today. My manager is gonna drop off my computer tonight. I can get it all set up and ready to rock for tomorrow and then tomorrow we can pitter patter have at her get to work. Work from home until I test negative for two days in a row and then I can return back to my regular duties at the office. So I guess that means I'm going to be saving on some gas this week and don't have to worry about parking or waking up super early in the morning because I don't work till 8. I can get up at 7, have a coffee, get to work, and then when I get off work, I'm already home. I can let him out at lunch and stuff. So by him, I mean Oreo. He's like back there-ish. There's one major problem I have right now, and that is that I'm lacking in food. See, a lot of the times I eat food... At my girlfriend's house, like I'll go over there every night for supper. Uh, so I just kind of never buy groceries because <laughs> I'm always over there. I usually pitch in with her groceries. I'll, I'll go out and pick stuff up that she needs to make things or whatever. And then, you know, joint effort. So I have no food in this house and I need to survive. So I might have to use a service like Instant Cart or Independent has one where you can buy all your shit online. They pack it up, you pull your vehicle up. I just have to make sure the box of the truck is open and then they can just heave the bags into the box of the truck and frig off. And then I can go from there. That way there it's contactless, less chance of them getting infected. And I can get some food in this damn house because we're going to need some food. So I'm probably going to do that later on tonight. It won't be part of this video. But like I feel fine right now. Like my throat's a little raspy. And you can probably tell my voice sounds a little off. I'm a little lethargic. Other people who've had COVID, like others from the office, like my coworker and that, they all complained of like sore muscles, heavy lungs, um, lethargy, which I got a bit of that. I've been counteracting it with coffee and caffeine, so that's fine. A lot of the symptoms that they got, I don't have. And, you know, waking up groggy, usually that happens in the morning. And, but the, today just felt really weird because I was tired and my head felt swollen. So when I started feeling that, I was like, okay, my body's fighting something. And it is. It's totally fighting off the Rona. So 
that's a thing. But I do feel good enough to try something today. And what that something is, is I bought... Okay, the past couple nights that I've been waking up in the morning and the boat has been covered in frost. The boat tent, the boat shelter is covered in frost. By the way, that thing's fully assembled and ready to rock. Uh, last video, you just saw the outer skeleton, the steel bars up. Got the canvases on it. And it's ready to go. I just need to get the boat in there. Now, I suck at backing up a trailer. I'm not going to lie. It took me about, I want to say, five attempts to get the boat by the mailbox where it is now. But I want to move it inside of the tent. Now, instead of moving it, I bought this hand trailer puller thing where you literally you hook the trailer hitch up to this hand cart. And then you just haul the friggin' thing where you want to put it back it in load it in away you go i figured that'll make life a lot easier i've seen some people put trailer hitches on the front of their trucks to make it easier to do what i want to do and i know a lot of you are probably leaving comments right now like adam just use your damn truck get more experience but no i don't feel like trying to line that thing up while i'm not feeling well and put it through like the bars and break my entire canvas or anything like that i'm just gonna use this pump truck thing First, we got to assemble it, and then hopefully I have enough power in this meat suit to pull it. Now, it can pull up to 1,000 pounds. I doubt that boat weighs 1,000 pounds. A 25-horse Johnson's what, like 60 pounds? The boat itself probably weighs 300 pounds. The trailer itself probably weighs... That's me being gracious about the boat, too, because it is an aluminum boat. Maybe it's a Bill 50. The trailer probably weighs about 300 pounds. The whole net package is probably 500 pounds. So I should be able to move that by hand because, like... Christ, I've deadlifted 250 pounds, no problem, and repped it. So if I can rep 250, I should be able to freaking grab a trailer and haul it out of there by hand. But that's going to be the battle plan for tonight. We're going to build that thing and go from there. First, I need to put a charge on this camera because for some reason it didn't get one. All right, I got you guys on the monopod because uh, we're going to go outside and build that thing. So let's go get that done. I'm feeling kind of lethargic, not really up for this, but going to do it anyway because it's got to get done. Got to get that boat out of the elements, into the cover. And this winter, I'm going to have to snow blow a path to it so I can get inside and knock all of the uh, snow off the roof of that shelter so it doesn't cave in. So let's get out there. It's actually a pretty beauty day out today, boys. Pretty beauty day indeed. So yeah, this boat shouldn't be that heavy. I can't see not being able to pull it. The, the trailer's solid steel. Probably doesn't need a paint job. But <clears throat> shouldn't be that hard to pull. And yeah, as you can see, tarp logic is up. And oh, it looks like something. Plenty of room in there for a boat. Should be plenty of room. Should be able to fit that. This thing's 20 feet long, and the boat is 16 feet. So I expect the tongue of the boat just to be right around here-ish, give or take. But all in all, she went up pretty easy. She's anchored. I got anchor points on all four corners, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Should be pretty decent. And we got a bit of a side skirt down here that the snow can sit on to build like a a little bit of a skirt to keep ship from getting underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the truck because the thing I need to build is back here. For this reverse camera, that came out clutch for uh, hooking the boat to the trailer hitch. Sort of. One thing I don't like about this backup camera, I made a video on this thing a while back, is you see how it's off center. I'm like the camera's over here, not dead center. So you do kind of see the side of the hitch. It makes for a kind of awkward uh, opening of the uh, ooh, backing in the trailer and all that shaz. Anyway, let me get this thing out and I'll show you what we're building. Anyway, guys, it's called the trailer dolly. Oh, well, can do 600 pounds maximum capacity. And, well, there you go. It's basically what it's going to look like after assembly. Looks like it's a four bolt setup. It could be three. I don't know. We'll find out. Right now, I got to take everything out of the box. Let's see what we're working with. All right, so it comes with two tires. They need some air, probably. Luckily, I have a pump in the garage that can do these up. Comes with the instructions for assembly. We'll need those. Piece of styrofoam for the garbage. Some more cardboard. I don't have my multi-tool on me, so I've been using this Rambo knife. Aggressive, but whatever. Does the job. And here you get your 
one and seven eighths ball, which is exactly what the boat is. All your hardware. Not sure what you're for, but the manual will tell me. And no idea what you're for, but I'm sure the manual will tell me. Cool manuals. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembly on this thing. All right, you got the base of it done. All that's left is to mount the handle here. The thing that it, I think it was supposed to go here, actually. I think I already cocked this over. Yep, I think I totally, oh no, no, no. It goes right there. Okay, we didn't cock it over. I'm uh, just not paying attention. The assembly instructions literally, it's, it's just one page. You like my toolkit? I bought that for Canadian Tire. It was on sale for 100 bucks. I just leave it in the truck. It's my truck toolkit. It's a Stanley kit. It's not too bad. I just discovered that to pull sockets off, you press the button on the ratchet, sockets let go. Talk about innovation, right? Alrighty guys, got her this far here. Just need to put the wheels on it. And those are just simply cotter pins. Uh, Trilla Darley, sure. Anyway, cotter pins are right here. They just pop in, you bend them over. And then you got some big, I'm assuming those washers are for, yeah, they're for the tires. There's only two of them, so. I'm assuming you put them on after, that's what it looks like. Then you just smash the ball into the top, bolt it on. Bob's your uncle. Pitter patter. Oh, one of these days I'm gonna have to clean this garage up because we gotta get the fire burden here. But right now I need to put some air in these tires. And then move the truck and see if I can move that boat. This is gonna be fun. Alright, there we go. Rated up 30 PSI. Got them up to like 30 PSI. Well, maybe less. I don't know how accurate that gauge is and I can't find my tire valve so like my pressure tester thingy so we're just gonna say it's good and first we're gonna go rock a piss and then we're gonna try and move that trailer all right first thing I gotta do is move this damn truck and then we can drop this thing on the ball and then see if we can move it stay tuned all right that should give me enough room because I need to come over here and put it in here. But well, first I need to drop it on the ball. So let's do that first. And then we'll go from there. Now to see if I can move this thing. I can move it. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the tarp logic for open mode. All right, we're in full open mode. Not my greatest job, but it's a job, so we'll take it. Let's get this boat in there now. Oh, I totally didn't record that, but we got her in there. There we go. We'll see how well this thing holds up this winter, and hopefully it doesn't collapse on my boat. And next year, I got some work to do on this thing. Nice. Boat is pretty much on level ground here, and I got this wheel turned sideways. But I still went ahead and shocked the back tires. It's not going to roll towards the street at any given time because the, the grade is this way. So if anything, it would roll and hit the house. But it'll be fine with those pieces of wood chalked in. I got another one on the other side. And the reason why I left more room on this side is so that I can come in here with a push broom and hit the top and knock the snow off as needed throughout the winter. Let's see how this thing holds up. Now here's the bonus is 
my buddy runs a company where he makes this material, not this material, better material. He bought one of these, the one with the, the peak on it, the triangle peak. And he uh, got two to three seasons out of the tarp till it started shitting the bed. And then he just basically took the tarp off, brought it to work or to his business and made one out of this super marine canvas. And he's been running that for 10 years now and the tarp is still in great shape. So he told me like, if you can get the skeleton alone, do it. I'll come out and take measurements and build you a cover for it. And then you'll be golden. But they don't just sell the skeleton. I do believe they sell the top, but they don't sell just the skeleton, which kind of sucks. So you have to buy the whole kit. And then when the tarp gets wrecked, you can order a new tarp from, tar from Shelter Logic and put it on. But if he can build me one that's more durable, depending on, you know, this thing here will actually do what I need it to do then cool if not we might be looking at a more permanent structure to hide the squeaker seeker in the meantime so but yeah next next year i got some work i want to do on the boat there's some wiring and stuff that i need to figure out trailer wiring the lights don't work on the trailer for some reason they were working but then as i was coming home the truck said trailer wire fault left signal which sorry right signal this one back here was not firing it was working, then it stopped, so I got some electrical work to do. I'm thinking the problem is, is right here in this mess of shit. But I'm not too worried about that because I'll just take this all apart and put it back together using split loom. Or not split loom, but uh, shrink wrap. And I'll solder it if I have to. But yeah. And then, like I said, next year I want to respray the boat as well. Give it a different color. Make it look prettier. Need to get a marine battery for the trolling motor. I have both the handheld remote for it and the foot pedal for it. So that's pretty sweet. It's a wireless operation. And in case you're wondering, because I never really showed much on this boat, it's pretty much uh, a flat bottom. Except for up there, it obviously curves. But, but yeah, it's pretty much a flat bottom. We've got a spare tire in there for the trailer. It's going to be a fun boat. I'm sure the girlfriend and I and her daughter will have a great time out catching bass and all that on this, especially with a working trolling motor. So we can lock the boat in place should be good so right on project number one completed boat is out of the driveway now i can take this thing down this might be a two-hand operation okay right back i do want to do the mod where buddy puts the stick across the bottom so i can brace it to the anchors when it's closed but no big deal we should be good anyway i'm gonna put the truck in the driveway now and there we go squeaker seeker is officially parked in her own garage so that'll be a fun toy to play with next year but as for this year she needs to sleep and that was my battle plan all along was to buy a cheap boat package in the fall and that one was pretty cheap and because nobody wants to store them right so they end up putting them up on kijiji or marketplace for dirt cheap so if you're in the market for a boat right now people are in the market to get rid of their boats some people will do a trade for a sled because sledding season's coming into play. And then in the spring, they do a sled trade for a boat. Sure, whatever. It's because they don't want to store them. It is what it is. But I noticed that last year and the year before. Struckus was trying to get me to buy a boat a couple of years ago and even last year. But I just wasn't financially stable enough to buy a boat at that time. But then things changed. And then I, earned, I, I made saved some money for a boat. Bought a boat. So I got a real good deal on that. Real good deal. Steal of a deal. What I paid is what the trailer's worth. Let's just say that. And it should be friggin' awesome. Like my buddy's cousin didn't need it anymore. He got it. He got his dad's old boat. And his dad's old boat is a big legend fishing boat with a friggin' awesome trolling motor and all that. So he didn't need his this, the Grand Dam. Formerly known as the Grand Dam, now known as the Squeaker Seeker. He didn't need it anymore, so he figured, why have two boats? Kind of pointless. Plus, he has a little 12 foot John boat that he uses for back lake, uh, back lake attacks. Like, if he's going to open fire on, uh, like, there's a couple lakes that he was telling me about that have good trout. We were supposed to go to them, but, you know, life's busy. That's also the reason why I haven't been uploading so much lately, is because life is busy, guys. I'm always got something on the go and I can't always film it because I'm not doing like I did before and putting all my personal shit up on YouTube because that's very intrusive and 
sometimes living a private life is a good life. Like I said, I make these videos because I like to make them, not because I'm trying to make money off them. It is what it is. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. You know what? Click that like button because a guy who tested positive with COVID just pulled a boat around his driveway. I wish it would have recorded, but I hate this camera. I'm using the DJI uh, Pocket Osmos, and the record button on this thing is kind of broken. You really got to hammer on it. And I didn't hammer on it, so I missed the entire recording of me moving the boat. But obviously I did it because it's in there, and it was attached to the trailer thing. I didn't use my truck, because if I would have used my truck, I wouldn't have had a shelter anymore, because let me tell you, I suck at backing up a trailer. So I have no idea how the hell I'm going to launch this thing next summer. It's going to be friggin' interesting. Stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, live it to win it. Peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.